Well, good morning everyone and uh, welcome to the Peak District where, as you can see, it's a gloriously sunny autumn morning. I've just driven up through Hathersage, uh, heading up towards Surprise View Car Park, which we'll be parking in, which is just on the left-hand side down here. I've brought my trusty uh, K9 sidekick with me to uh, share the photography adventure. The plan for today is to um, have a wander around a couple of birch woodlands and then We'll make our way, I think, eventually into Padley Gorge, which is a beautifully sided valley with a little river running through it, uh, Burbage Brook, and uh, it's probably one of the most photogenic locations in the entire Peak District. So we've got a nice bit of beech woodland here. Uh, lots of tree trunks, lots of bracken in the background. Half of it uh, has started to go brown already and half of it's green. So there's a, a nice bit of contrast there and a bit of color there. The sun is just shining, it's quite bright. It's come out from behind a cloud and so it's casting some quite harsh shadows at the moment. So I think what would be a good idea is to punch in with the 70 to 200 lens see if we can cut out the sky and cut out the ground and just focus on uh, on trunks and in the distance and what I've spotted in the middle probably around about there is there's actually a really nice birch tree that's got a big Y shape in it and it's just catching the sunlight there is a smaller tree that's um, half broken down between the tree that I'm going to use to frame on the right and the tree that I'm going to frame onto the left so I don't know whether that will end up being being distracting or not but um, I guess we'll only find out once we've taken the picture and and tried it so let's give it a crack So here's another tip for uh, autumn time is it's a very good time of year for things like this a fungus to grow you can see that's a it's quite impressive bell like shaped thing is coming out of the side of this what looks like a dead um, dead birch tree but uh, yeah that's uh, that's quite impressive i think this would be good to uh, it's quite thick i'm not sure whether it'd work but to shine a light a big torch through that and get some glowy light out of the bottom um, to do some editing in Photoshop to try and do something quite uh, quite fairy-like but um, there's one or two around here but I've seen some um, fly garlic as well which is the uh, the typical reddish coloured one with a white stem and the little speckles on the top uh, which is uh, very poisonous uh, 
I'm not sure whether that's poisonous as well either actually, so better not touch it, just in case. Mm. So just uh, stumbled across these in the woods here. Um, again, more fungus, a different type to the one that we saw up there. Again, growing on what is the stump here of a um, of a birch tree. Uh, there's a nice big lump of uh, grit stone here covered in bits of mosses and stuff and I'm just wondering whether that will make a uh, uh, a nice picture if we can get a good composition. Um, set the camera up and we'll uh, we'll give it a crack. Right come on let's go. There's some uh, very large pieces of uh, grit stone in here in this uh, this bit of woodland, and uh, this little fern here and these grassy mates have uh, made themselves a bit of a home in this crack. And as I came round this rock, I kind of saw this, and it was just catching the sunlight. And there's um, some little flecks of red and uh, in the veins going down the leaf that uh, I thought was quite attractive. So I'm going to see if I can try and take a picture of this. Um, it's quite windy and this leaf is moving so I'm going to have to have a half decent shutter speed as well. Lots of really nice texture in this grit stone, there's some quite big pieces of grit in the middle of this. So uh, I'll give it a go. So I've headed down across the road into the, uh, the other section of birch woodland and uh, this is uh, grazed by cows. In fact, I'll just show you. There they are, grazing away. But what I'm interested in is right down at the bottom end there, there's um, quite a density of birch trees. I'm going to try putting the 70 to 200 millimeter lens on and taking a picture, zooming right in down there.
So this is uh, one of the many waterfalls that you'll find down here in Paddley Gorge and uh, I'm going to try and take a picture of that. I'm going to uh, stick a circular polarizer on the front and that way I can hopefully take all of that glare that you can see in the water down there, hopefully that will go. Um, should also make the uh, that bit of tree there, should bring out the colours and make that a lot more vibrant as well I think. Okay, so I've uh, popped a circular polarizer onto the uh, front of the camera lens, uh, and I've turned it so it's uh, it's maximising the effect. So as I rotate the uh, polarizer 90 degrees, it's going to reduce its effectiveness. And look at the uh, water in the bottom right corner, uh, and see how much more glare appears. And then by turning it back 90 degrees, it uh, reduces the amount of glare. So if I do that again, but this time, watch the foliage in the, uh, the top left of the scene. As I turn the polarizer, the colours and the leaves become more washed out and lose a lot of saturation. And then again, as I turn it back, the uh, colour intensifies and the leaves become more saturated again. So uh, another tip for autumn photography is to use the colours of autumn like that as a sort of a backdrop, a secondary subject to a primary subject. In this case, a nice waterfall in front of a... Uh, a nice bit of a pool here. I'm going to uh, try a variety of shutter speeds because there's a little bit of wind and there's some movement in that. So I want to make sure that that's nice and sharp. But I also want to try and freeze the action in that water so as it's a little bit more smoothed out. I think we'll try everything from maybe 0.3 of a second to one and a half stroke two seconds and, uh, and just see what comes out the best. And then I'll probably try and take a much faster shutter speed to make sure that that bit gets frozen and then you can try and glue them all together in Photoshop afterwards. Uh, that beech tree there that's going yellow is um, might make a really nice composition if you just taking a picture of that beech tree and that rock there and then getting the, uh, the stream in as well so I'm probably going to go more that direction over there uh, get a bit closer to it and see whether I can get a composition looking up through the stream through the rock and into the tree and I think that could be quite nice So here we are at the end of the uh, little autumn photography adventure in the Peak District. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video and found the tips useful. If so, please consider giving the video a like. And if you'd like to see more photography adventures from myself and my trusty sidekick, then hit the subscribe button and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next adventure.